Good morning, everybody. I have a question. Uh, could you use a little extra hope this morning? Could you benefit from having a little hope for the future? I'm willing to bet you could. And I want to let you know that you're in luck because this morning, if you're looking for a little extra hope, God's Word has it for us. In fact, a great resource for us is to find a message of hope that's found in the book of First Peter. And I'm going to take a few minutes to unpack some of this for us. So uh, if you want to turn in your Bibles, you're welcome to join me this morning. First Peter, and we're going to begin in chapter 1. So First Peter chapter 1, it opens up by saying this, Peter, an apostle of of Jesus Christ. Now, this is the very same Peter that you probably are familiar with, the disciple of Jesus, right? He, he's the one who wrote this. In fact, he's writing a letter from Rome. And it goes on to say this, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion, and then he lists a bunch of places in Pontus and Galatia and Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. And so what we see here is Peter is writing a letter to a, a group of people who he calls the elect exiles of the dispersion. And these are the cities he lists, these are places in Asia Minor, or modern day Turkey. And so the question we have to ask real quick is, is what is an exile? Well, if you know your Bible pretty well, you're familiar with the term exile because in the year 586 BC, uh, there was a, an evil empire, the Babylonians, who swept in and they took the people of Israel and they brought them into a foreign land, into the land of Babylon. And there God's people, the Israelites, they stayed in a foreign land in exile for 70 years. And so this meant that they were uprooted from their homes. They were uprooted and separated from their families. They lost all their belongings, their possessions, their houses, their wealth. They lost everything and, and for 70 years they were in a foreign land, in enemy territory. These are what exiles are. Now what's interesting about this though is Peter is writing to this group of elect exiles. But what's interesting is these guys actually aren't real exiles. In that these are people who grew up in these towns and, and villages across Asia Minor. This is where they were from. It's a group of Gentile Christians. And so the question we have to ask is why, why would Peter call them exiles if they actually aren't in a foreign land? Well, he does this and, and he'll explain why because notice how he continues on. We're going to pick up now in verse 3. He, said, he says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, According to his great mercy... He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, I, I want to pause there for a second because he talks about these people, the audience, how they've been born again. Now, you're probably familiar with this term born again. In fact, if you read John chapter 3, remember Jesus, he's talking with Nicodemus and he talks about what it means to be born again. And Nicodemus is confused by that term and Jesus explains that, that those who believe in him, they receive new eternal life. They're born again. So what that means to be born again is it means that when you place your faith in Jesus, you're given a completely new life. God gives you his Holy Spirit. You're given eternal life, but also you're given a new identity. No longer do you belong to your old way of life. You now belong to a completely new way of life. You belong to Jesus now. You become one of his. In fact, you become a citizen of heaven. Paul talks about this in Philippians chapter 3. He talks about the fact that we have a citizenship that's in heaven. We're, we're new people with a new identity. This is amazing news. And so Peter could call this group of people exiles because the truth is, even though they grew up in these towns, now that they belong to Jesus, they don't belong to the earth the way that it is presently any longer. We're made for something more. We're made for heaven. And the truth is the same thing for you. If you're a follower of Jesus, then the earth right now, the way it is, the present state of chaos and disorder and challenge and strife and conflict and turmoil that's all around us right now, this is not your home. Right? You were made for something more. You have a citizenship that's in heaven. You have a heavenly home. And when this earth is perfected, this, this will be your new home. And so Peter says, hey, you guys, you, you are no longer citizens. You have been born again. And he says, to a living hope. So what's the hope of an exile? Well, let's think about this just real quickly, just very practically. Imagine that you and I were uprooted from our home. We were taken from everything we know and we were brought to an enemy land. What would be our hope? My hope would be that I'd be able to go home one day. My hope would be that I'd be able to return to my house, which I own, and see my family, who, who I love, and have my belongings and possessions and finances back in order. That would be my hope. And it seems the same thing is here. When Peter's talking to these elect exile, he, sa he says this. This is the living hope. Verse 4. That you'll have an inheritance that is imperishable, 
undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in this last time. And so what's he saying here? Well, he's saying that it, this, is, this is the point. If the world around you is difficult right now, in fact, it's guaranteed to be. And in fact, if you read verse six, he says, you rejoice in this now, but in a little while, you know that you're gonna be grieved by various trials. This is true, right? Right now, we have trials. But the good news for us, beloved, the good news for those of you, you and I who are exiles in this foreign land, the good news is that God has our inheritance, our heavenly home, it is secure. Our belongings, they're intact because they're guarded by God. And so right now, if you're looking for hope in the midst of all this chaos, just know that you have a home prepared for you that God is guarding and keeping for the day when we're gonna redeem that, that, that one end day, the consummation of all things, that the resurrection of the dead, we have a guaranteed inheritance that's kept in heaven for us. But until we receive that, the truth is you and I are exiles. We're strangers. We're aliens in a foreign land. And so in the midst of all this, uh, I just want to share one more verse for you. This is later on now in the book of 1 Peter. He says this. So right now, if you're struggling, you know what? Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, he says, Cast all your anxieties on the Lord because he cares for you. And he cares for you so much because you are his child. You belong to him. And therefore, you have a great inheritance you can await in glory. So take comfort in that, church. Take comfort in the fact that God has something better in store for you. There is hope for the future. This will pass and we can look forward to the day when God is guaranteed we're gonna be with him and be, be home forever.